Gospels for the Deaf and the Blind. Okay, welcome everyone and good evening. Welcome to Graduation 2018. I'm Susan Thomas. I'm the Director of Communications for the schools, the campuses, and the programs statewide. And I'm very happy to introduce you to our superintendent for the Utah Schools for the Deaf and the Blind, Joel Coleman. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you tonight. We are so excited to have you here, family members and friends and dignitaries. In a moment, we'll have the procession of graduates and they'll come in. But just uh, before we do that, I thought maybe I would introduce some of our honored guests this evening. Um, with us, we have here, sitting up on the stage, we have three of our board members from the Utah State Board of Education, which is the school board for the Utah Schools for the Deaf and the Blind. We have Kathleen Reby, we have Carol Lear, and we have the chairman, Mark Huntsman. Mark will be speaking to us in a few minutes as well. And we also have uh, another keynote speaker, Kurt Radford who is a professor at Utah State University. Also with us here on the stage is Carolyn Lassiter, who is the Associate Superintendent over the School for the Blind, and Michelle Tanner, who is the Associate Superintendent for the School of the Deaf. So I know you haven't come here to listen to me tonight. I'm not gonna take much time, but I just want you to know how excited we are to have you here, and I just saw the graduates out in the hallway, and they are so nervous and excited, they're giggling. All, all, I think every one of them is giggling. So at this time, we will have the procession of graduates. Please stand for the posting of the colors. Guard March. now join in the Pledge of Allegiance 
That will be by Braulio Clark, who will sign the national anthem in American Sign Language. And following a local singer, Michael Root will sing for us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the much. You may be seated and our thanks to Troop, Boy Scout Troop 861. Welcome to our Utah Schools for the Deaf and Blind graduation 2018. We would first like to introduce Mark Huntsman. Joel will make a few comments and then I will say a few comments as well about Kurt Radford. So we'll turn the time over to Joel and then to Mark. excuse our dignitaries on the stage to sit down here so they can all see everyone from their seats in the, in the audience here. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> I just want to uh, give a brief A uh, brief uh, introduction of, of our, the chair of our board, Mark Huntsman. I spoke to him today, and he said one of the greatest things that I've, I've heard. He said, Joel, every time I'm around schools for the deaf and blind, there's just an energy and an excitement, and I love being there. I can't get the smile off of my face when I'm around your students and your staff members and everybody else. He truly loves USDB, and that's, a, that's an exciting thing for us. So I'm going to read his, his bio now. And then we'll have him come up and say a few words to us before 
the Superintendent Tanner introduces our second speaker. Mark Huntsman is the Senior Vice President of Operations for Sunrise Engineering in Fillmore, Utah. With his help, his company has grown from 14 employees to being a regional, multidisciplinary firm with 180 employees and 13 offices in Wyoming, Arizona, and Utah. Mark served for years on the Miller School District Board. And additionally, Mark volunteers as the State of Utah Ombudsman Director with the Director of Defense and is the First Lieutenant and Special Deputy with the Miller County Sheriff's Office Search and Rescue Team. Mark attended Southern Utah University. Mark enjoys scouting, ranching, <laughs> teaching young people to ride horses and work cows, outdoor recreation, including boating, camping, fishing, and hunting, and he loves to spend time with his friends and his family. He and his wife, Brenda, have three children and seven grandchildren. Thank you, Chairman Huntsman, and we're excited to hear from you. share this evening with you uh, and to speak to the students, their families, the teachers, and others who have been involved in this graduation milestone. I have served on the Utah State Board of Education for the past three and a half years. I've served as the chair for the last year and a half. I'm, again, I'm real excited to be in this wonderful building and amongst um, all of you and wish you the very best um, in your future endeavors. I also want to thank you for the warm reception that I always get um, from USDB. Is it, is it okay to use acronyms? Okay. <laughs> Staff and from the students, your examples of persever perseverance and achievement always bring betterments to me, to, to my personal um, professional work, my elected duties, and also to my family. My inter interactions with you bring joy and happiness into my life. Thank you for this invitation this evening to be a part of this important ceremony. Some of you know that the Utah State Board of Education also serves as your governing board for the deaf and blind. Because of that, board members are very interested in the achievements of the students of USDB. Once a month, the State Board of Education meets in a separate meeting to hear about your, compliment, your accomplishments. Also, we hear about budgets and the challenges of USDB. I look forward to those meetings for we have opportunities to learn more uh, about you and your school. As you know, you attend a unique school in Utah. Although there are about 200 students served in the USDB campuses in Ogden, Salt Lake, and Orem, approximately 1,700 students statewide receive support and use of services on a regular basis. USDB is known for its innovative use of technology and for how its teachers use unique tools to improve instruction. These dedicated educators go the extra mile to give students a well-rounded education. I am told that those of you graduating today are from the School of the Deaf. Congratulations. You have all reached a major milestone in your life and one that I'm sure require unique strength and dedication. Your parents, families, and teachers and administrators should all be celebrating in this achievement. Over the past several months, um, we've been able to hear from many who have attended the School of, uh, for the Deaf about the opportunities you've had while traveling and experiencing different cultures. This spring, students told us about their trip to Italy. It was obvious that the educational this educational travel helped build their confidence 
um, as they met other deaf students from other places in the world, we learned that communication while traveling can be a frustrating experience for some deaf children and adults. Hopefully these students and all of you will build upon these similar experiences and continue to explore beyond the boundaries others may have set for you. All of our experiences, all of our experiences interacting with students from USDB, we have seen evidence that the students here face life cha challenges with a positive outlook. This is critical for everyone regardless of their ability. The other day I went to the doctor as, after I had some surgery on my back and I was in a rush, didn't know what kind of day I was going to have after, when I went in for this visit. But something interesting happened. I, parked way, I like to park way out in the parking lot so I can get a lot of walking in. And a car joined me way out in the parking lot and this little girl came out to out of the car I went, oh, where's your parents? And she's looking at the door and she started signing. I said, well, this girl must be deaf. And the mother stepped out of the car and she was pregnant out to here like she was having twins or triplets. And I go, wow, that's going to be a long walk. And they started signing to each other and grinning ear from ear. And I so I was grinning ear to ear whenever I, I see someone communicating this way with joy and happiness. And so I kind of followed this mother and young girl, she was about three or four, all the way to the door and I timed it so I could open the door um, for them. And I continued to observe the joy and happiness that they were having in their conversation. I did not know what it was about, but I could tell they were happy. They came to the elevator and, and we started separating, our, we, we separated from each other and, and someone spoke to the little girl and she spoke um, just fine. So it was her mother who was deaf, but this little girl accomplished this signing at such a young age and could participate in a I don't know what the conversation was, but it had to be a wonderful conversation. But from that point on, the rest of my day, my, I think my cheeks started hurting from smiling because I could witness part of that joy. In all of, these are all experience, this is all, these are the experiences all of us have um, being around the deaf and the blind. Um, now you, now you are preparing for life after high school, whether that includes college, career, or working towards another major life milestone. You are all now getting better prepared to contribute to society and continuing your personal, your personal growth. I have one last page, I'm almost done. I was, we were talking about milestones here. The bio that you heard was a bio that was put together when I first started on this state, um, for Utah State uh, Board of Education. At that time, I was a, a senior VP, about 180 employees, um, and I think it said seven grandchildren. And that, you know, that's quite an accomplishment. I, you know, I, I kind of remember those days and I thought, hey, I have arrived at something, but milestones change. In my world, I am now the president and CEO and we're 320 employees and I'm blessed with 13 grandchildren. So milestones can change when, when you think that you've uh, arrived, you don't ever think you arrived. As you're arriving and hitting that milestone, look past it to the next one and set that for you. The Utah Schools for the Deaf and Blind motto is the realization of individual potential. As you know, USDB uses 
an individualized approach to education to help meet the unique e needs of each student. As graduates, as graduates, you now have this opportunity to apply all that you've learned through your experiences here and use that momentum to reach your next milestone. I know that you will do great things and I look forward to hearing about all those accomplishments. Again, I want to thank you for bringing much joy and happiness into my life. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. We appreciate Mark Hunton for speaking to us tonight. <coughs> for our students, he, the board, is a group of individuals that help make sure that we're running the school appropriately. And Mark is the chair of that board and, and heads that board for them. So thank you again. Every time we go and present, Mark is there attentively listening and thinking about what's best for our needs. So thank you again, Mark, for everything that you've given to us and for all that you do. Thank you. We also want to recognize someone who's come into our door. Dr. Sydney Dixon. And she's the superintendent for the schools of around the state of Utah. Dr. Dixon, if you'd like to come forward. We have a special seat for you. Joel's up here in the front, and you can um, sit next to him. Dr. Dixon is the superintendent for all the schools of Utah, and we're grateful that she has come for us. She's a wonderful woman, and we appreciate you coming tonight and celebrating with us. Her time is very precious at the end of the school year, so we're thankful for taking the time to be here. It is my honor to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Kurt Radford. And sometimes when we hear the word doctor, this doesn't mean a physician, someone that you go see if they're healthy or not. But this means a doctor who has put in long hours of schools and study and research and your final degree that you achieve is a doctorate degree. I'll tell you a little bit about Kurt. He is currently works at the Utah State University. He is a professor there. He also teaches American Sign Language online and also manages the language lab that they have there. He received an award in 2013 through 2014. Let me get the right name of the award. The American College Education, Educators of the Deaf Innovative, Innovation in, teach, in Teaching Teachers with Technology. He's received many other awards as well. He is married and has four children. He's been involved in the deaf community. He does a lot of community action and is highly um, involved in the Sanderson Community Center for the Deaf Advisory Council. Some of his other interests and hobbies. He graduated from the Idaho School for the Deaf and Blind. And he is a football player. I'm sure you can recognize that from his stature. You'll see why when he comes forward. He's an amazing man and a good friend of mine. And I'm honored to introduce to you Dr. Kurt Radford. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that uh, generous introduction. First, I also want to thank Mr. Mark Huntsman, who just spoke on milestones 
I agree wholeheartedly with the remarks that he shared. Throughout my life, I've had milestones that I've seen, and I still see more milestones that I have yet to accomplish. So I want to congratulate the graduating class of 2018. I feel honored to be here to speak to you. Graduates, I congratulate you, but also I congratulate family, teachers, friends, members of the community who have been involved at different levels. We know that parents feed the kids, wake up the kids, get the kids to school, teachers get them motivated at school, energize them, and then when they don't want to do the homework, the teachers educate them on why it's important to do the homework. And grandma and grandpa, you know, give their love and admiration, and the family helps re-establish their self-esteem. We're all involved in this wonderful journey of education, so I feel uh, obligated to congratulate all of you. My remarks today will be based on uh, my experience when I graduated. My graduating class was similarly small to what we see here today. A lot of deaf schools throughout the nation graduate small classes where non-deaf classes graduate 1,000, 2,000 students at a time. But deaf schools, we have a smaller population. And the reason that's so neat is because it's family. We have our home family and our school family, and forever we will be a family because we're always deaf. Deaf culture is what ties us together. <clears throat> if you struggle in life or with family, you can go to another deaf peer and they will be able to relate exactly to what you're saying. And they'll be able to help you and give you advice. This happens to me all the time. When I run into a deaf friend, they give me advice and tell me, try this and do this. And I'm so grateful for that. That still happens, even at my age. Deaf people like to give advice, I'm sure you'll find. After you graduate, you'll have opportunities to give advice and receive advice as members of this family, which is a unique opportunity. When I was a young boy, 14 years old, I, well, I was never little. I was always a big little boy, right? So I was born big, is what they tell me. Mom had a hard time holding me up, and she had to develop an extra muscle group to hold me up. So she tells me I was born big. When I was 14, I started driving. In Idaho, that's the age you're allowed to drive on farms. Here it's 16, in Idaho it's 14. My father definitely made the most of this. He took advantage of this. He's like, you can drive? Okay, here we go. You're going to go to work on the farm. <clears throat> I told my dad that I was deaf and that I couldn't. I, I, I wanted to stay home and play on my Atari. And if you know what that is, you know the little joystick and there's the one button. And there's all these buttons now, but back in my day we had an Atari. I told dad, no, I'm deaf, I can't help you. And my dad looked at me and he gave me this look and he said, excuse me, you will go drive the combine. And I said, dad, I'm deaf, I can't. And he said, that isn't an excuse. I don't care. Go drive the combine. So I went and drove. <clears throat> a combine is a rather large machine with large wheels. It has hay clippers on the front, and you drive it that way, right? It's a large machine. I said, Dad, this machine is hard. I don't know what to do. I won't be able to hear it when it starts. He said, figure it out. <laughs> so I did. I tried. I broke the starter the first time, you know? <laughs> click, click, click. I broke it three times, actually. I realized that what I needed to do is I needed to put one hand on top of the, do the dash and then click the starter, and I got it, right? I could feel the combine starting. I figured it out. And I, I could use vibrations in my hands to figure it out. Throughout my life, throughout my whole life, even now, I'm figuring things out. I have a plaque in my office, even now, today, and it says, I'm always doing things that I can't do so I can learn how to do it. That, really what that means is that things that I can't do, things that are considered failures, I try and try again 
until they become successes. That is a lesson I learned from my father on the farm. With challenges and things that I don't know how to do, I become dedicated, hellbent even, to do these things. Some people who don't have any patience give up, right? Here's a, a, some friendly advice. You need to have a little bit more patience. As you figure things out, you have to go deep. You have to dig deep within yourself to succeed. And then you will be able to share that knowledge with others. You can tell them, look, this is how you do it. And people will say, I didn't know that you could do that. And you can respond in the affirmative saying, you can. Growing up, I played football. In high school, I, we, I would work as a linebacker, as a lineman, and I couldn't get tackles. If you can't get tackles, you can't play college. And that's what they told me. The coach told me that if I can't do blocks, if I can't push, then I couldn't play college ball. So as I played, I would get stuck. One day I had the idea to move over and play half man, which means I wouldn't tackle directly. I would tackle to the side and I could get tackles that way. And then when I got to college, they said, man, this guy's big and he can tackle, bingo. So they put me on the team at USU. That's how it happened. I figured it out. So my advice to you, graduates, community members, family members, if you don't know sign language, figure it out. There's, we have countless resources on the internet using technology. If you're wanting to hear, you have to think What's the struggle that I need to overcome and figure it out? Once you figure it out, and once you figure out how to figure it out, you can be successful. You can have that feeling of gratification. There's no better feeling than that feeling. You feel enabled, empowered, and that will help you navigate success. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Radford, for your comments, and I will figure it out. <laughs> I'm still figuring it out myself. <laughs> Next, I'm speaking to you, our graduates. I want to share with you about how all of our teachers and staff feel about you and who you are. We have this video presentation, and I will be uh, doing a rendition of, of the music as well in sign language. Every room inside 
can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say we've lost our minds. I don't care, I don't care if they call us crazy. Run away to a world that we desire. Now you will have the opportunity to meet all of our graduates. We will each have them come up in turn and to make a few comments. And we'll just go in order from there. So we'll just each take a turn to come up. First, we'll hear from Joshua Torres. I am happy because I'm graduating here, but I do want to share with you that we are thankful for the people who have helped us. First, Michelle Tanner, the Associate Superintendent of USDB, who has done a lot to make us happy. Thank you for letting me go to Italy and have such a great experience. I have known you since I was in kindergarten. You were my first grade teacher. Ms. Amy, the principal of Jean Machu School for the Deaf. I remember you when I met you. I was in your kindergarten class. You were the best kindergarten teacher ever. Blaine Taylor, the art teacher. I loved his crafts. He was the reason why I still love crafts. He's the most inspirational art teacher I have ever had or ever met. I've also known him since kindergarten. Teresa Nude Nukumbi, the English teacher from Skyline High School. Thank you for teaching us. You helped us learn how to read better. Mr. Flygar the math teacher from Skyline High School. 
Thank you for teaching us how to do math. Sarah Leathers, the drama teacher. I wanted to thank her for setting up our Shakespeare Festival trip where we went to Cedar City, Utah. This is the best place I had ever had the opportunity to perform at. She's the best drama teacher. I wanted to tell you that we shouldn't forget Ellen O'Hara. She is our fourth grade teacher. She's the most inspirational teacher. She's always encouraging, encouraging us and helping us be happy. We will never forget her. I'm grateful to my parents who have chosen the school for the deaf. I want to thank my friends who encouraged and supported us, each other. I want to tell my friends that we need to have good futures after graduation. Thank you. You understand why we love these students so much. Next, we'll hear from William Diaz. Hello, my name is William, and I am a senior at Mountain View High School. I want to thank my parents, Ron and Carolyn, and my family for supporting me, for driving me to school, for coming to my plays, for helping me with my homework. and studying my vocabulary. I love you. I want to thank my interpreters, Brady and Emily. My best friend at school is Trevar. We have gone to school together for a very long time, and we have a lot of fun together. My favorite class has been drama. I've taken drama for three years, and I've been involved in three plays. One of the plays, I was my favorite DJ. I would like to show you a short part of that performance.
Wonderful job. Wonderful job, William. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Pablo Angel Chavez. Hello, everybody. My name is Pablo, signed Pablo. JMS is my second home. I want to thank all of you, all of the faculty, and all the staff who have helped me get through school. I want to thank my teachers who have helped me and supported me. I want to thank all the interpreters and anyone else who may have contributed. I also want to thank Wade, who's here with us today, for his support and the best coach of all the years in high school. I want to say thank you to my parents for the awesome parenting that they've done in helping me in school. I also want to thank all my friends. We've all had great times, and I have good memories of our, of our all of our times and our favorite events. My favorite memory is hanging out at breakfast. I'll miss all of you. Love you. You do have great friends. Next, we'll hear from Trevor Diaz. And Trevor attends our Deaf South campus at Mountain View High School as well. My name is Trevor Diaz. I am a senior from Mountain View High School. And I want to thank my teacher, Kelly. My favorite class is reading. And I have improved so much. I love you, Kelly. And I will miss you. I'll miss your class. I want to thank my friends. And I want to thank my interpreters. Brady and Kelly, they are the best. Thank you very much. I want to thank my best friend, William. He is a funny guy. I will miss you, William, and we have been to school, in school together since we were young. I want to thank my parents and my family, too. My mom has done me so much, done so much for me. I love you, Mom. Some of the things that I've enjoyed doing is going fishing, and I go fishing every day. When school is done for the day, I head over to Sportsman Warehouse. And I want to work there eventually with my dad as well. I'm excited to graduate, and I wish all of us the best of luck. Thank you. says that he's going to go fishing with you. Thank you, Trevor. Next, we'll hear from Jose. My name is Jose Gallegos. I want to thank my parents, my little brother, my little sister for helping me through my journey in high school. I want to thank my interpreters, my teachers, and yeah, thank you. Jose joined us when we went to Thailand, and he was very nervous on that trip. 
but now you can see that he is very confident. And he, when we went to Italy, he had no fear. He was out there meeting everyone. Great job, Jose. This is Josiah Gonzalez. Hello everybody, my name is Josiah Gonzalez. I just wanna tell you how much I'm going to miss all of you. I'm grateful for the teachers and for the staff and for all that they've done here for us while we've been in school. I wanna thank my mom for all of her support, for always having hope in me, and always knowing what, the fut what future lies ahead for me. I want to thank all my friends for our camaraderie and for all of our school years together. I want to thank everyone. I'm going to miss all of you. Thank you very much. Josiah was my student uh, way back when, and he was very quiet and shy at that time. Obviously now you can see he's grown out of that shyness. <laughs> Next we will hear from Amber Lamb. Hello, my name is Amber Lamb. And I attend school here at Utah Schools for the Deaf and Blind. I am grateful that I was able to join here at the Jean Michel School for the Deaf because the school and teachers are so caring. They've helped us, we've had lots of fun, and we've learned so many things from preschool to high school. Each grade has been amazing and made a difference throughout my life. I want to say thank you to my parents for their help in getting to school and for all their support. I want to thank my teachers for all their help through classes and the learning and real things that I've learned about the real world. I want to thank my interpreters for helping me in my mainstream classes to interpret for my friends there. I want to thank my friends that have been with me as we've been growing together and as we've learned from each other. I want to say a special thank you to Ellen O'Hara who taught me a good lesson about reality and that working hard is to get what I want in life. Ellen has been a big role model and I still look up to her today. I wanna say thank you to Michelle Tanner and to Amy Breinholt for helping and encouraging me. I also want to thank all my sports coaches for Whitney and Ellen, for Mackenzie, for Travis, and for Amanda. I look up to them as the people in our school who made me realize that we are deaf and that we can do anything that we want. I'm proud to be a JMS Jackie. I want to say thank you to all of everyone who's been accepting of me. I love this school, and because this school accepts everyone, it's so friendly and very sociable place to be. This school is like my second family. My favorite memories are being, hanging out with everybody and learning new things. Being involved in different activities, the clubs, the dances, basketball, track, space camp. Finally, I'm happy that we're graduating from this school. I will miss school when I leave, but I will not forget being here and the memories will carry with me. To my class of 2018, most importantly, I love you all. Thank you so very much. Amberly, just one second, come around this other way. Great job.
You can always depend on Amberly to do the right thing, always. She's such a sweet young woman. This is Javier Lopez with his dimples. Obviously he's been our basketball player and he's got the best dimples. Come on, smile Javier, let's see him. My name is Javier Lopez and I go to JMS. I have a lot of memories at this school. I spent my entire childhood here. I want to thank those teachers who have helped me. I also want to thank the interpreters for their help. I want to thank everybody who's helped me in my classes, for my parents in getting me here and their support. I'm grateful for Wade, for his work, for his inspiration and motivation. I'm grateful for Shareen, Solomon, Kibi, for tutoring me and helping me finish my homework and packets. I want to thank Teresa Kundi because she helps me tremendously. I send a huge thanks to all my friends for encouraging me and helping me, namely Pablo, Amber, Alexa, Khadija, Joshua and Josiah. My favorite memory is growing up with you guys. We had so many fun things happen in school. You guys are my favorite. I will miss you all and miss this place. JMS is my home. And I want to say thank, thank you all for your support of me. I've had an amazing experience here at JMS, and I will never forget the school. I love you all. Class of 2018, thank you. Hopefully you noticed the right words that were chosen tonight, family. We, are, we do have a big family here. Next, we'll hear from Tunisia Noor. I want to say welcome to the class of 2018 and to all here who are here tonight. I would like to start by thanking my parents who have raised me since I was a child and have helped me to become the person I am today. Every one of us graduating have those special people in our lives that care for us each day and love us unconditionally. And all are here today, and we cannot thank them enough for everything they've done for me and for being with me. I'd also like to recognize a few of our great teachers who have worked with us successfully. Amy, Blaine, Jenny, Michelle Tanner, Tiff, Teresa, Sarah, Kelba, Flygar, Christy, and Stephanie. It is the teachers like these that we can trust to help us to develop students and prepare to be further to further our education. We want to thank them for everything that they've done for us in the classrooms and for all that they've done. And, through these, these several years. Throughout my time here at Drama School for the Deaf, I've been involved in the student body officers since I was in seventh grade. My cl classmates have elected me to class vice president for the past two years. I thought about joining basketball and I wanted to be involved and be active. And they've helped me a lot. And I've been able to be a team leader and I've been able to look up, look up to others as well. I'm grateful for our coaches, for Whitney and looking up to her. I'm thankful for, for her letting us be a team together. We've had so much, time, so much fun going to the basketball tournaments in Arizona. And I was able to win, be awarded an all-star award for being best player. Starting in the fall, 
I will be attending Salt Lake Community College for about a year and a half. My goal is to become a teacher. I want to be able to go to ten Kenya and be able to make a change and impact to help people be successful there. I know that we can learn as we believe in ourselves. I want those children there to be able to believe in themselves so they can become successful. One of my favorite memories is when we went to Thailand. We were on the street. Um, there was a din we were having dinner near our hotel. And their waiter gave us a menu to order from. We talked about things. And then the waiter brought us a cup shaped like a woman for the drink I ordered. I was so embarrassed because they looked at me and laughed at me at the same time. I just laughed because it was so awkwardly funny. Another time, I was riding my bike through the pretty small village. And it was really empty except for one tree right in the middle. But I didn't pay attention because I was fixing my pants that became stuck in the bike. So when I looked at the tree, it hit right. And I just froze for a few minutes until Amy asked if I was OK. And I said, yes, of course, and still talked about how funny that was. I want to say that I'm happy to be here at Utah Schools for the Deaf and Blind. Um, to my parents, parents who endlessly have helped me, I know that we can be successful in whatever we might do um, as we go to college or whatever it might be. Um, I know that we will continue to be together through the years. I'm grateful for my family, for my siblings, and I'm grateful for all the memories that I will carry with me, and I will never forget this place. I cherish each of you, and I'm so very grateful for all that you do for me. I love you, Mom, I love you as well. <laughs> We still tease her, so we want to warn all of you. I mean, if you hit a tree, and there was nothing around it, there was one tree, and you know, I'm a little bit nervous for her driving skills in the fewer. There was just one tree there. So I love you, Khadija. Next, we'll hear from Alexa Sloan. Alexa has attended John Lashew School for the Deaf. Hello everyone, my name is Alexa Sloan. I've attended Skyline and Utah Schools for the Deaf and Blind. When I first started school here, I didn't know much sign language. But as I came to school, I started to learn and improved my skills and developed and became much better. And now here I am graduating. I'm very proud of myself for the things I've been able to accomplish. I'm grateful for Liana. I'm grateful for Jill for all the hard work that they've done in teaching me and helping me develop through these years. I would like to thank Teresa, Christy, Sherry, and Chris Flygar. I'm grateful for their open-mindedness and for the staff and for all that they've done for me. They've done so much, they've been on by my side the whole time, and I'm grateful for being able to make these achievements. I'm grateful for my family, for all of their support. I want to thank my mom and my dad and my grandma and grandpa. I'm, I'm grateful for my extended family as well. They've helped me and stood by my side and helped me be successful. I love you all, thank you. We're sad to see Alexa go. Her energy is contagious and spreads throughout the school. Next, we'll hear from Ashlyn Tingi, and she's from the Kenneth Burdett School up in Ogden. Well, we're finally here. And I look back at all the things that we've accomplished and heading on for college. I'm grateful for my parents, for my siblings, for my uncle, for my coaches, and there's too many people to list. I can't imagine my life without all of these people in my life. I just wanna say thank you. Ashlyn's always been a woman of few words. When we went to Thailand, 
we went into the train and we didn't know we went into we went into the doors and we didn't know where she went and we eventually found her but again she's just so quiet she's just was quietly standing there we thought we had lost her but there she was We love you, each of you, and we're so very grateful for all of you. We next will be able to present you with your um, certificate of completion. We would like to invite um, Superintendent Coleman, as well as our principal, Amy Brainholt. So, Adam as well, Nate. Also, Mr. Huntsman, if you'll come forward as well. As we call your name, if you'll please come up around to this side. We're not going to be going forward. We'll try to go in order here. Pablo Angel Chavez. Trevor Diaz. Jose Gallegos. Josiah Gonzalez. Javier Lopez.
Khadija Noor. Alexa Sloan. Ashlyn Tingy. Joshua Torres. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> we are wrapping up, and you guys are going to be graduated. You're excited for this, right? My responsibility now is to inform Superintendent Joel Coleman on behalf of the faculty and staff and the administration here, I certify that these students have completed the requirements mandated from the State Board of Education within their respective schools in partnership with Utah Schools for the Deaf and Blind. And I recommend to you that they should receive their certificates of completion as graduates of Utah Schools for the Deaf and Program. Deaf and blind programming. Thank you, Superintendent Tanner. On behalf of the State Board of Education, we accept these graduates. Graduates, would you please stand up? You can all move your tassels to the other side of your cap. Congratulations. Congratulations. We have refreshments in the cafeteria, and the grads can get their pictures taken there. And everyone enjoy some cupcakes and sandwiches. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you in the cafeteria.